Now, as you've heard me mention many, many times, my own particular spiritual trajectory roadmap, I wouldn't call it a path, is European paganism. Mainly because that's what I am. However, it's just what I found the easiest to deal with in terms of my own spiritual progression. Having said that, I've nothing against any other spiritual path that someone else might be interested in. So for instance, I'm also very much uh, connected to Hinduism, basically because it has the same Indo-European root as European paganism. So I'm just as comfortable praying in a, a Hindu temple as I am uh, in a grove in the woods here, venerating Odin, Thor, Freya, the Morrigan, Lou, and that's all fine for me. Again, these are just archetypes that help you to resolve forces in the universe and aspects of the psychology within yourself in such a way that you can actually help you in your day-to-day -day life. Now, as you know, I do not like Christianity, mainly because it's a corruption of Judaism. It is Jude it's, it's, it's a form of Judaism that went wrong. I have nothing against Judaism as, as such, uh, but Christianity and Islam are forms of Judaism that became almost like corrupted and turned into mind viruses. And the proof of this is crusade and jihad. However, that's not to say anything from the Middle East or anywhere like that is bad, uh, automatically bad. It just happened that it happened there because the Middle East is a focal point of the Eurasian African landmass they all meet there. So it's almost like a, a volatile explosive region and always has been and probably always will be. Now, Luciferianism is, if you're not interested in paganism, or you can't relate to it, but you'd like a spiritual path, Luciferianism is one that I would recommend. Now, the Luciferian doctrine is actually very good. Now, I'm seeing all these people screaming, their eyeballs popping out, their heads, their 14 spliff of the day, while watching, you know, flat earth and mud flood videos going crazy. But let me explain to you what the Luciferian doctrine is, and how it came about. During the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church had taken complete and total control of Europe in every single way and form, spiritually, but also politically and socially. The Pope was the most powerful human being on earth at that time. This was a time of absolute unbridled horrors. Now, the Church had come to power, the Catholic Church had come to power to the absolute pinnacle of its reach. They had slaughtered all the Cathars, they had murdered most of the pagans in Europe and then they took the best parts of the pagan doctrine and incorporated it into Catholicism and uh, so they were able to survive and continue and they murdered and slaughtered and killed anyone and anything that got in their way. They were absolutely brutal. A part of this, shall we say, gangster, spiritual gangsterism that the Catholic Church and Christianity in Europe was up to was snuffing out rivals just like any street gang and one of the rivals was Islam they wanted to snuff out Islam so they formed the new crusades remember the original crusades were to destroy the Cathars this was to go to the Middle East and wipe out Islam when the knights got there from Europe they were all types of men from different cultures in Europe from different backgrounds and they were working class and middle class and wealthy and they were all together and when they got to Jerusalem and they got to the Middle East, they were suddenly exposed to other forms of spiritual traditions that they'd never ever would have encountered in Europe because of the suppression by the Catholic Church. Hinduism, and particularly Judaism, Kabbalism, but also Hermeticism from the Middle East, from Egypt. And also there was elements of Greek and Roman and Latin classical philosophy and uh, Neoplatonism and the Bogomils Mills and all this other kind of things that still ret was retained in the Middle East. When they got there, one of the ideas that hit with them, probably through interaction with other forms of Christianity and Gnosticism, the remnants of Gnosticism, was that the God of the Bible was actually the evil one, and Lucifer, or the, the, the devil, whatever you want to call him, was actually the one who was trying to enlighten humanity and save us from this tyrant called Jehovah, Yahweh, or whatever. Adonai, as he was known in the Middle Ages. Now, this blew their minds, and then that this is the gold that the Templars talk about, that they brought back to Europe. 
And the, but because of the power and the brutality of the Catholic Church and what was done to the Cathars particularly, they went underground and formed the Knights Templars and Rosicrucianism and later on all became basically Freemasons to carry this Luciferian doctrine into the future. Basically the Luciferian doctrine states this, that the god of this planet is Lucifer, the god of the human race is Lucifer, but like the goddess Diana from classical paganism, he does not interfere in human destiny. We do that for ourselves because we have free will. And therefore, what we do on this planet is a personal choice of our own. We either follow Yahweh and we become monsters and brutal, or we follow Muhammad and do the same thing. And we wait for judgment and we wait for suffering, we wait for pain, and we impose judgment and suffering on others. Or we become enlightened and this is where the light bringer comes from now this was held within freemasonic circles up until the late 1800s when helena blavatsky wrote a pretty bad book called the secret doctrine very badly written most of it is word salad and waffle but she was the first one to put the idea out there among the masses that lucifer was the real god of this planet and was actually the good guy and that's why he was thrown out of heaven and from this we had the idea of theosophy developed I would say a better source for the early days of Luciferianism would probably be Alice Bailey. She was not quite as nuts as Helena Bavlatsky and also was a better at articulating the concepts through her superb magazine, Lucifer. And she was the one who popularized this idea in Western society, mainly because they were looking for a new way to steer humanity away from mechanized industrial warfare. And this became very powerful during the, war, the First World War in particular, when theosophy was a major religion in Europe. And people forget that, that theosophy was actually rivaling Christianity in Europe at one point during around 1918, 1919, that period. And... Uh, it was actually like Bibby's Journal and magazines like this carried mainstream uh, articles on Luciferianism and things like parapsychology and the, the Europe was definitely waking up and that was also the, the first great occult revival of the 20th century that happened at that time but unfortunately the likes of the Third Reich and things like the uh, Fabian Society in England took these ideas and then used them for political reasons. I, I have a film coming out called The Haxon Protocol, which will show how the European pagan revival was destroyed by National Socialism and the Third Reich. And this is why I have absolutely no time for you Hitler fanboys. Apart from the fact that you're all a bunch of socialists, which is bad enough, you're also, which is, you're also, you've also taken part in the greatest destruction of, Christ, of paganism since the, the First Crusades, uh, the Prussian Crusades back in the 1400s. <clears throat> You corrupted it through stupidity and uh, through politics. And so uh, that was what was going on then. So basically, Lucifer is the god of this earth and you have free will. And with this free will, you can ascend to a higher state of being re and also reincarnation is central to this. Or you can choose to do good works for mankind or be selfish and self-involved. Either one has a price to pay in a kind of a karmic level, if you can look at it that way. Good and bad in both cases, but ultimately there's no judgment because you're given a chance to resolve it over time. So the idea of Lucifer being a bad guy is not true at all. Lucifer gives you your free will. Now Luciferianism is connected to the idea of light. Why that's important is because light is... a uh, a very integral part of human spiritual development. You've seen my video on what I happened to me recently in Germany. I mean, look at me now. Look, look at me. I'm, I look 10 years younger. I blasted a whole hex out of my body. I am a man reborn. I did this because an archetype of Lucifer was invoked. At that moment, it worked. It could have been something else, but I was, and a spiritual opportunity came along and I invoked it. And look at it. I mean, look at me. Tell me I'm wrong. And I'm, a, I'm in a much better place now. I've had energy and happiness I haven't had in years. And I'm just having the most beautiful people coming into my life at the moment. And that will continue for as long as I maintain this path. Am I a Luciferian? No, not at all. I'm a European, Indo-European pagan. Uh, I do have a strong affiliation to Hinduism as well. However, like anything else, I see the value in things and I will incorporate them. I'll see the value in something like the life of Buddha and incorporate that in Taoism. 
and record that. But that doesn't incorporate that when it's needed. Remember, we're still the one same human race and we're still stuck on the same one planet. And therefore, these spiritual archetypes are useful to tap into for all of us. We can all do it. And this is what's a great thing that upsets me, though. People go, oh, Lucifer is a Luciferian doctrine. The world would actually be a much better place if it was under a Luciferian doctrine than a Judeo-Christian one. A Judeo-Christian Islamic one. It would be a much better place. Why? Because people would not be defending the right to be genocidal. You see, Christians and Muslims talk about peace. But what's that price of that peace? That everyone who isn't a Muslim or everyone who isn't a Christian is either converted to jihad or crusade or is exterminated. Christ peace can only come about in Christi Christianity and Islam through genocide of anyone who isn't Muslim or Christian. And that's the abomination of, of, the, of these, uh, you know, these, uh, these fractures, these corrupted fractures of Judaism. And that's again, like I say, I'm not saying Muslim people are bad or Christian people as individuals are bad. I'm talking about the actual fate. And that's why I believe just like Christianity is dying right now, Islam will die as well because they're not sustainable in terms of how people see themselves in their hearts. Think of yourself in your heart and you will see that you cannot agree with these fates. You cannot agree with them, no matter where you come from. And I have absolutely no doubt that in years to come, there will be a massive increase in paganism in the Middle East. You will see uh, tensionism coming back. And you'll see, the, the, you see Jews converting to the original Canaanite paganism and worship of deities like El. Again, that doesn't mean that these deities or these gods are real. What it means is they're powerful archetypes you can have for the development of yourself and the understanding of unseen and unknown forces. So that's the Luciferian doctrine. The next time you hear some Christian or some truth or screaming about the Luciferian this and the Luciferian that, know that you're dealing with someone who's probably not educated on the subject and has been brainwashed by Christianity. The fact is that we've seen great improvements in humanity, particularly in the West since Luciferianism came along. We have a lot more things like charity taking care of people. The peace movement probably came out of it as well. The idea, you know, before before Luciferian doctrine came along, people considered war to be normal. War was something you did. We've seen a lot of that stop. Of course, we have, we've had a horrific war since it arose, but at the same time, too, we've had a huge peace movement. And the reason is this is that people think for themselves. People who had growths in civil rights, you know, like you'd have the Bible was used to justify African slavery, particularly the book of Ham. And uh, the, no, the, the doctrine of Ham, H-A-M-M, -M, where they spoke about how people were lesser because they had dark skin and big wide noses. And that all came out of the Bible. That's why I, I can't understand why African Americans are actually supporting them, are actually Christians. It makes no sense to me. But uh, that will change in time. We'll have people in Africa who'll begin to promote African paganism and it'll spread to black people around the world and that'll solve that problem. Again, that's what Luciferianism is, enlightenment and not sticking to one path. I'm not, I'm not a fanatic. I see this is like about, about paganism because there's no one book to do it. The same at Hinduism. There's no one book that says you must do this and you must do that. There are books of philosophy. There are books of mythology, but they're not actual, totally hard canons of religious uh, behavior and, uh, and belief. And that's why paganism, like Hinduism, is a, are constantly revolving. Some of the problems I have with people who, who want to do strict uh, Nordic paganism or strict Celtic paganism, because they're end of European religions like Hinduism, they're constantly developing all the time. They don't have to be stuck in a, a Bronze Age doctrine like Christianity, Islam, and, and Christianity and Islam is. They can develop and flow with technology and time and human and social development. And this is the beauty of these polytheistic religions or polytheistic spiritual traditions. So I hope you've learned something there about Luciferianism. The next time you hear some, some gobshite screaming about the Luciferian agenda or the Luciferian music videos and this, that and the other, know that these people haven't got a clue what they're talking about and uh, maybe, just maybe, they're on the wrong side. But that's not for me to judge, that's for them as individuals to judge because the ultimate path of all is the one you choose for yourself.